Heard a sound. Nothing there. Nothing up there either. I guess I'm tripping on something. I don't know. Hello, my viewers. Welcome back to the channel. And by the video title, you know what this video is about. Mock Draft 5. Point oh. Um, last week did pretty solid mock draft. I believe it was on Thursday as well. Week before that, and week before that too as well. I probably got got this one and probably another one. I might have uh, a second one. I want to at least do six. So I might have next week might be the last one, or could have another one after. We'll see what happens. But the free agency of the Steelers have been going absolutely crazy on the start off. Um, the free agency. We got Russell Wilson added to the team. Patrick Queen added to the team. We just signed um, Deshaun Elliott. On um, safety, you know, solid safety um, presence as well to fill that safety void we have. Um, we went out there and been doing some, making some great moves. Jesse Johnson got traded. Uh, say it helped us a little bit in salary. And then we got Dante Jackson. He's all right. You know, he's not, he's not good. He's not bad. He's like in between. He's like a solid player. I don't think is going to use him to like flip something out or try to like make a deal or trade. We'll see what happens like that. But he's a solid player. But the Steelers have been making a lot of big time moves on the defensive side because you know last year our defense was bent but no break. Um, we gave up a lot of yards, a lot of yards. You know, the, the Russian um, numbers was high for us. The passing numbers was high for us. But we played bend but break type of defense because the teams had a lot of yards on us and I gained us a lot, but they didn't score a lot of points on us. You see some of our points. We had, I think, the fourth, uh, the Sydney's tied second for the fourth most, for, for, for the most, for the least amount of points allowed in the fourth quarter. And I think, um, we only average, they're gonna allow like 20 points a game, 21 points a game like that with the defense being injured, you know, missing all the linebackers, Minka being out the lineup for most of the season. Um, same thing for Cam Hayward, he missed the first like eight games with a torn groin. So we were able to go out there and just make things happen. So I think the Steelers have built a nice roster to go out here to compete the highest level. One thing about the Steelers, they always gonna find a way to win. We, we, we was winning when our team was in rebuild mode, and now that we're in a mode where we're trying to go out there and compete and try to win now, we're gonna see what happens. But let's get right into this mock draft right here. With the first pick in the mock draft, I took Jackson Power Johnson. Jackson Power Johnson is a good player. Where's my opinion? Uh, Jackson Power Johnson is a good player, amazing player, um, dynamic piece. Um, as, you, as you guys know, um, he's probably one of those generational type of players that you'll probably be able to take in the first round. I think he's probably top. He's top 20 in his draft class. I think he's like top, I think he ranked like 22nd, 23rd in his draft class like that. So he will be going the first round. I don't know exactly where. I think Joe Alt might be the first offensive lineman taken off the board, but Jackson Power Johnson was on the board available. As you guys know, I said I'll be willing to take Cooper DeGene or Jackson Power Johnson if they're available right there. I know the Steelers got a safety now, of course, but for the future, you know, Cooper DeGene is a good player. He can be a second. He can play cornerback and he can play safety as well. You can use in different spots. So if he was available, I would have took him, but he wasn't available. So I took Jackson Power Johnson. Uh, we need the dynamic piece in the middle. We, have, we haven't filled the void yet for the center position. Now I'm making this video at like one o'clock. So we're going to see what happens. Something could happen later on in the day. So if it does, I'll probably be in the comment section like, okay, um, we, we signed this guy or that guy. But right now, for the moment, I think the Steelers' plan probably is to get a guy in the draft. Whether it's Jackson Power Johnson in the first round, which is a generational type of player who could bring a different level to your rushing attack, different levels of the passing game, and be a stable piece and a leader for that offensive line that, that, break, that bolster it up a different level because Broderick Jones is amazing. And then Jackson Power Johnson. James Daniels pretty good as well. I just see Malu pretty good as well. And then you go out there and get you a, a, another tackle, a solid tackle. The all line can just jump up numbers because last year did a big time jump when Brian Jones got put in the lineup um the rushing attack was very good with Najee and Jalen Warren so hopefully we see that too with Jackson Power Johnson added or let, unless it's Zach Frazier in the second round or if it's um, um Teddy Van Pran in the second round as well we'll see what happens but I think Jackson Power Johnson if he's available and the Steelers are going to pick and if a guy like Cooper DeGene is gone hey take Jackson Power Johnson I'm uh, moving on next to my next pick which is um Malachi Clorley let me say his name wrong. Malachi Corley. I'm um, from Western Kentucky receiver. Um, very good player. Good player. 
Uh, if you've seen him, his um, play style is similar to me, in my opinion, of uh, A.J. Brown type. And he's a he's like a, a, a stealer type of receiver they want to draft. Like I mentioned before, Ricky Parasal from Florida, and Malachi Corley is another guy too as well. Of course, a doc, well, I can never say his pick because he, he he's ranked he's ranked think like top 50 player in the draft, top 50. I think he's like maybe 60 ish. Think like think, no, I actually think he's top. I think he's 69. I think he, I think he just falls short underneath, underneath the top 50 players. But Malachi Corley, if you watch his highlights, you see his numbers. He put up 1,000 yards the year before last, his junior year. And then last year, he put up 900-plus yards. Um, very good route runner. Good route runner. Um, strong hands. Physical. He's not afraid of contact. You know, still his love receivers like that. You know, Tony Brown was very good. When people play man-to-man -man coverage on him, he found a way to get and beat that man-to-man -man coverage. When Tony Brown got the ball in his hands, he made plays happen. Even though he lost his mind, his game was very good. He made plays happen, get the ball in his hands, and he go to work. Hines Ward, very physical as well. Like that, get the ball in his hands. You see him break tackles. You see him deliver hits on people. You know, when he was blocking, you see him go out there and just be physical and dominant and set a tone against um, some of those defenders. And you look at Juju Smith-Schuster, same thing. When he was here in his tenure, physical receiver. George Pickens, who they drafted as well in the second round a few years back. Very physical receiver, athletic specimen, um, speed, has the height and everything. Malachi Corley will fit perfectly in there with him. I think he's similar to A.J. Brown play style and his yards at the catch. He's very good at yards at the catch. You know, you get the ball in his hands, he go crazy. I, I seen, um, always watch Steve Smith podcast. Steve Smith always uh, talking about a lot of different things. And when, like, especially around the draft time, because he always does a great job in analyzing receivers. And I'm watching him talk about Malachi Corley, talk about all the different type of guys. And he said Malachi Corley is probably still in the draft, in his opinion. And Steve Smith has hit on a lot of draft picks. And then you watch, and then you watch Malachi Corley um, film. You watch his film. You see some of his um, big games, his big moments, and you see everything. You just see how he stands out on his team, like being one of the best players, one of the dynamic pieces on his team, and just going out there and just being a game changer. All you got to do is get the ball to him. He's one of those guys who can just pass a maybe a five-yard drag route or something. He can turn a five-yard catch reception into a 30-yard game. He hit the ball in his hand, put his foot in the ground, and he's gone. He, he's very physical. He, he don't shy away from contact. He has speed. Um, he's one of those dynamic players you can get. And if, you, if he's available for the Steelers, I think they take him because he, he fits their play style similarly. You know, route runner, physical, quick, strong hands and stuff, and very good at the catch. George Pickens, same thing, you know. He, he has a pretty good route runner. He has strong hands, and he's very good at the catch as well. The Steelers like guys who can get open in space. And when our play scheme is going to be a uh, run-based team, you know, like play action, getting guys coming across the middle, trying to get the ball in the hands of um, George Pickens, Calvin Austin, and we got a Malachi Corley, get the ball in the hands of him as well to like make things happen in space. So I think he'll be a great addition to add to the team. Moving on next, my third pick, I took Kyrie Jackson. Kyrie Jackson is um the cornerback from Oregon, you know, the big 6'3 cornerback from Oregon. As you know, the Steelers got Dante Jackson from the trade, but I think Kyrie Jackson will be a great addition to add to the team, a top 100 player in the draft as well. Um, He's very physical. Being 6'3", 225, almost 230 pounds, he's a big, he's a big freaking um, cornerback. You probably look at him initially and probably think he was like a linebacker or safety, but he's fast. He has speed. I think he ran a 4'4 four, four, four type speed. He has speed. He's very physical. Sometimes he can get him, get, he can get himself, he can get in his way a little bit by playing conservative, but most of the time, I'm not. When they put him in the right scheme and the right system and have him just being a pressed man cover, um, cover corner instead of being like that zone coverage and just sitting back and waiting when he just press man coverage he's very good he's very good and we see him go out there and be physical and then ha imagine that having him as the second cornerback having jpj you know jesse jackson is there too so most likely you probably have jesse jackson as the second guy i, I believe leo wallace is still on the leo wallace still on the roster i don't think he's on the roster he might got released i don't know i have no idea i don't think leo wallace he might be on the roster still i don't know but um Kyrie Jackson getting added. Corey Trice is still on the team as well. I think it's still is going a young approach of trying to build a young core of guys to win now and also build for the future. I think Kyrie Jackson will be a great addition to add to the team. You know, Oregon is all about speed, so he has a speed to match up against the receivers. He can play the ball in the air. He's six foot three. He uses arm length well. Sometimes he can get conservative based off the scheme they put him in, but most of the time, you know, the way the Steelers play football, we like to send a lot of blitzes in. You know, send a lot of blitzes in, but we haven't been doing that. The past few years, because our personnel wasn't as good, but now, the last year we got JPJ, who was able to send more blitzes in, because we know that he can hold up in man coverage. So having a guy like Kyrie Jackson, who can play in man coverage, JPJ, who can play in man coverage, and added Patrick Queen and all the other guys we've been adding to the roster, we can start getting back to our old days of like sending that pressure in and just devouring um, offensive lines and devouring quarterbacks. I think Kyrie Jackson would be a dynamic piece um, on the other side as well. Moving on next, um, in the fourth round with the 119th pick. 
I took um, Blake Fisher. Blake Fisher is a um, solid player. Uh, I, the reason I took him, you know, the right tackle from um, Notre Dame, he's a solid player because um, we, we need somebody over there to solve. We don't need somebody to be game changing. Now, if you can find a game changing right tackle, that's even better, of course. But a guy like Blake Fisher, probably like a third, probably like a third, fourth round type of guy. Like maybe second round of a, a team willing to like say, oh, we see something in him. But kind of like third, fourth round type of guy. I, I took him in the fourth round. He was available in the fourth round. Took him. Um, I think um, Blake Fisher is a solid piece. Just something that's just to have over there to be consistent. He might not be Pro Bowl level, but I think he can be. But you never know. He can maybe work himself into that. But I think he's a stable piece that be on the other side of, of you know, right by the Jones on the left side. He be on the right side. We got James Daniel. I see him and then based off my draft, you know, too as well. Jackson Power Johnson as a center. I think that'd be a nice core and um, of a uh, offensive lineman. And you always can have Darnell Washington and you know be the six O lineman like he called himself. And go out there and block for you. But I think getting a guy like Blake Fisher would be a solid piece. You know, somebody just to hold up. Not saying that he's the greatest ever. Not saying that he's bad either. He's like kind of just in the middle of the solid. Like, you know, he played he played 16 games. We played 17 games. And he gave us 12 games of being good. And he gave us two, three games of being a little, a little bad. And then the other games of just being all right. I will take that. We'll take that. We ain't saying got to be game changing, but... Having a guy like that, I think he's you know, looking at his film, looking and watching him. You know, I, I look at a lot of different tackles. You know, from the, the highest ones like Amarius Mims to Blake Fisher, um, to even inside line, offensive linemen. You know, um, BX Slimmer. Look at Zach Frazier, Jackson Power Johnson, Cedric Brand Pran, and all the different type of guys who um been talked about a lot in the um draft like that. I think Blake Fisher, the solid piece and good enough to hold on the the line for the Steelers on the right side. Uh, I, I think Dan Moore. Wait, is Dan Moore still on the? I don't know if Dan Moore's still on the roster. See, I should have probably seen some. I know, I know we released, we released Chooks Okafor, we released Chooks Keanu Neal, we released Presley Harvin, of course, and we released somebody else. I don't think we released Dan Moore. I think Dan Moore's still on the roster. But Dan Moore, I don't know if he can play on that side. We'll see. We'll see if he play on that side or not. But I think Blake Fisher's a solid piece. He's already primarily a right tackle, so I think getting him would be great for the Steelers. Moving on next to my the fourth round, the 120th pick. I took Tommy Eichenberg. Tommy Eichenberg is a solid linebacker. I think I talked about him on the um, the video I did a few days ago. I think it was on Monday. The um, video about the linebackers. Tommy Eichenberg from Ohio State. Instinctive, um, patient linebacker as well. Good in the run scheme. Good to zone. Good zone defender as well, and solid frame as well too. So he has a solid frame out there, and um, he just plays plays smart football. Plays smart football. Can find the gaps, can find the creases, um, can get in there to make plays. Um, like I mentioned, like I mentioned before, he's a more of a zone defender than like a man, the man covers type of guy. Um, as a pass rusher, you probably have to put him in the right scheme to see, because like you watch some of his film, you might have to put him in the right scheme. Like they, you know, one of those guys with like they're not primarily like good at just like let them go out there do what they want, but just having them like okay, we're gonna have you blitz in on this side, overload the side, or why is that or overload overload the middle side or something behind defensive lineman. He kind of like one of those type of guys when blitzing in and trying to like be a rusher. But overall, just having him be a zone defender, having him be a guy in the middle just to work on uh, and just pick his poison. He's good in pursuit as well, so like he can he can he's very good at like bursting off and getting downhill. So I think he'd be a solid piece to add. And of course, like I mentioned before, many times you never can have too many linebackers or DBs because linebackers, you know, you can find a way to implement them. Some guys are very good, like. Being blisters, being edge rushers, some guys are, guys are good in the run game, some guys are good in the pass game, some guys are good in both a uh, run and pass, like Patrick Queen type, or Devin White types, or um, Fred Warner types, you know, like some of the best linebackers in the you know, in the league, uh, like type of guys like who've been all pro level. Some so, and some guys are just good at one thing, you know. And then also DBs, you know, some of those DBs can play inside, some DBs can play outside, and some of them can play safety as well. So I feel like you can never have enough uh, linebackers and you know, DBs because you can always find a way to put them in different spots on the field. And the Steelers struggled a little bit last year with our depth of, def of defensive backs because uh, they start dropping like flies and then linebackers as well. So I feel like adding another linebacker like Tommy Eichenberg, adding a cornerback like Kyrie Jackson, and, you know, adding these different dynamic pieces will be very good to the team. And that's why my sixth, in the sixth round, you know, we kind of we we switched some picks up because we traded with the Panthers. So now we have two sixth round picks. On um, the sixth round, the 178 pick, I took Nehemiah Pritchett from Auburn. Um, he's another solid guy as well. I think um, he's a, um, what's the name? He's very fluid. I wrote down fluid, 
has good awareness. I didn't watch a lot of film on him. I watched like a little bit on um, about a few minutes of um, some of his stuff. So I can't really tell you the, 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 some of the bad things. I, I saw most of the stuff that was like good. They were showing. Um, but I'm about to go back and see. But I, I took him in the sixth round because we need more depth. You know, defensive back. He was the best corner available um, from Auburn. Um, we, we, what I seen from the little bit I watched, very fluid, you know, quick, had good awareness, good instincts, and probably could be a uh, more like a more like a zone corner type guy, not too much like as a man to man type. Maybe uh, all right in, the, in that in that sense and stuff. But I feel like he's more of a zone corner type by looking at him, just being patient, and that's why I took him too as well. Cause I was like, hey, if you can play good zone coverage, you can probably can play safety as well. So like I mentioned before, you can never not have enough cornerbacks. And last year we had we get guys from. The practice squad and then to sign guys to just a few day contracts and stuff to bring them in and injuries start happening so you never have enough linebackers and db so i took nehemiah prickett on the best cornerback available within the sixth round um the sixth round pick the 178 pick and um yeah from auburn last but not least i took gabe hall with the 195th pick in the sixth round gabe hall is a defensive lineman from baylor um strong hands aggressive powerful and um, what, what I've seen too that I like from him as well, kind of remind me of DeMarvin Leal a little bit. DeMarvin Leal hasn't, I feel like in rookie season he was pretty solid. He had some injuries coming to him. I think he'd probably get better. But kind of remind me of DeMarvin Leal being versatile, able to play the edge as well. He defends the lineman, but he can play the edge as well. Um, seeing him go out there, strong hands, he used that power. He can get past guys, and he's um, got some good mobility too for his size and versatile piece. He might not be the biggest for a defensive lineman spot because he's like 200 and He's 289 pounds, or something like that. You know, most of the guys are 300 plus, but he's still very good enough um, to go out there and make some plays. I feel like he'd be a guy I'd probably fall within the fourth, fifth, sixth round. Um, he's one of those raw talents. You know, like you see the talent there, kind of like Joe Milton, where people have been talking about him a lot too as well lately. Um, one of those talents, are like they have the intangibles, and we've seen them make some plays, but they haven't played enough football to um, kind of like get seasoned yet. So I feel like in the right system, in the right scheme, maybe them sitting behind somewhere for a little bit, learning and being a rotational piece might help them emerge um, to a different level. So uh, he's like a raw talent right, right now. I think in the right right, right coaching staff, the right guy I get with them. You know, Cam Hayward is here with the Steelers. He's a very good veteran and good leader as well to some of the teams and you know, teammates and some of the players around the team. So um, yeah, I think he'll be a good mentor if he was to come to the Steelers and still was to draft him with the um, 195th pick. That'd be a nice addition to add to the team. But yeah, that's basically it. This is who I, this is who I selected last. Um, my last pick. Um, solid guy. Solid player. So I took Justin Power Johnson first. Took Malachi Corley second. Kyrie Jackson on um, third. My two fourth picks. I took Blake Fisher. And I took Tommy Eisenberg. And then I took my two six picks. Nehemiah Prickett, cornerback from Auburn. And then the other one, I took Gabe Hall. That's a lineman from Baylor. So, I, I think the draft overall, I get this one right here. I'm going to give it an A- minus because I, I was able to address our um, center position. I was able to address our receiver position. He was a game changer type guy. I added another cornerback for more depth and maybe a potential starter too as well. And I added a, um, a, a offensive tackle too for more depth and could be a potential starter as well too. Tommy Eisenberg for more depth. Um, Nehemiah Prickett for more DB depth. And then Gabe Hall for more depth in the middle of the line too as well. So I think the Steelers, they was to go out there. And I don't I know the mock drafts are just, you know, like just us, just me going out there picking what I think can help our team. But the Steelers, I feel like their eyes are probably on, you know, the top two picks either being maybe the center or receiver. I think receiver probably. Receiver and center or center receiver. The Steelers are very good at finding guys, receivers, especially in the second round, you know, type guys like that. Second round guys. The late round guys, we seen Antonio Brown from Central Michigan, not the biggest school, but they found him. And you know, year one, he made some big plays in the playoffs. And then year two, start shooting up, and then we start seeing him become one of the best receivers of his era with, straight, with seven straight thousand yard seasons and 100 catches. Mike Malachi Corley is a guy who's from Western Kentucky. He had a lot more production than what Antonio Brown had in college, but uh, he's a guy who can go to the middle. You know, Western Kentucky University, not the biggest school in the world, but I feel like he. Um, you watch some of his game, you like you can see that he's one of those. Dynamic game changing pieces. So I think if he was available to still take him, Ricky Paracel as well. Andane, can I say his name? Andane or Adane. I think Adane. Adane Mitchell from um, Texas and a lot of other guys too. This receiver draft is very deep. So the Steelers was to do that. That'd be a dynamic piece. But I think Malachi Corley would be the, one of the better suggestions because of his um, physicality and the way he played. He kind of remind me of an A.J. Brown type of guy, and I still love that type of player because George Pickens is kind of like that too as well. So I think it'll be 
a great dynamic. I know they want to create some versatility. He's a little different than what Pickens is because he's more of a route runner type. But I think he has set off well. And then you maybe go out there and get you a veteran receiver if you want to. I know they said Tyler Boyd and the Steelers have sharing mutual interest. I don't know if that reports or that source is credible or not. But that would be a nice addition too. Imagine that. You have George Pickens. You have Malachi Corley. Tyler Boyd as well. And then you have Kevin Austin as your gadget type guy. Miles Wilkins, I think, I believe, is still is on the roster as well. He's a good special team player. Uh, has some size to him as well. So that would be a pretty good receiving core. So we'll see what happens. But that's all I have to video say, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Peace out.